Richard Southern joins us once again this hour. Richard, uh, Toronto has earned a title that's nothing to be proud of. It's been named the rat capital of Ontario. <laughs> Not really a surprise, but it sounds like the rat population has also been impacted by this pandemic. So this is both uh, equally interesting as it is uh, creepy, Janelle. Okay. But vermin, vermin here in the GTA are staging a major migration. They're moving out of their favorite commercial dwellings, and they're looking to shack up more with us instead. Oh, oh look no. at that thing! So here's, <laughs> so here's the deal, Janelle. Ma rice, uh, rats and mice, they love Toronto alleyways behind restaurants and bars. The dumpsters there have been full of food, you know, making for, you know, generations of happy and full rodents. But the pandemic came along. Restaurants closed or scaled back hours. The dumpsters were empty. And so the mice and the rats, they packed their bags and they're looking to our homes instead. I talked to the experts over at Orkin today. They say their phones are ringing off the hook. Rats and mice, they need food, water, and shelter. If they have all those three things, they, there's no need for them to move. They'll stay in one area and live their entire life in a very small area. But if you stress them by taking any of that out of the equation, they will move. Um, so you know, with the pandemic, with you know, much less food supply from commercial facilities like restaurants, um, suddenly those alleyways aren't filled up with you know, recycling and, and available food material they can travel a fair distance and sometimes that'll be now into a residential property rather than commercial. Janela, he tells me that, you know, residents here in the GTA that, you know, have been in the same house for like 20 and 30 years and have never had an issue are now seeing those things running around. How interesting is yeah. that, that they've been disturbed by the pandemic like we have? Yeah, our uh, camera up here, Randy, told me the same thing. He's lived in his house almost 30 years, and for the first time ever, he saw a rat in his backyard. So now wow. we know why. The neighbors are moving in. <laughs> Okay. By the way, Orkin said we're home to the most rats in this in the in the uh, province, followed by Mississauga and Scarborough. So there you go. Okay, I'm gonna need to find out some tips on how to keep them at bay. I do not want uh, new uh, neighbors in my house. No. <laughs> okay, a giant new sculpture unveiled in downtown Toronto, and some are calling it a bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, you'll get why here in a second when I show it to you. This okay. giant new sculpture just unveiled at the Richmond and Adelaide Center. Oh, look at that thing, Janella. <laughs> a big head, literally. <laughs> it's a big Wait. head, but here's the thing. It looks different depending on where you're yeah. standing. So our city news camera shot it here from different angles to give you a sense of how this, this head changes depending on where you are. Uh, this was, by the way, commissioned by Oxford Properties that owns the buildings there. It was created by uh, Spanish sculptor, uh, sculptor Jemaine uh, Piencia, who has done similar works around the world. Almost as big as my gigantic head. <laughs> well, you like I, that? You like is I that a good thing? Would you like that? I want to know whose sculpture. head that is and how, <laughs> who decided that he was worthy of a giant sculpture. Why not a giant uh, Richard Southern uh, head sculpture? I'd uh, like to see that. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, nobody needs to see that. Janelle. You think the financial <laughs> district is empty now? Would you be even worse with that around there? <laughs> All right, Richard. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow.